Now, Washington mornings on the mall. At AM 630. 807 on WMAL, where Washington comes to talk. Brian Wilson joined today by Larry O'Connor from Breitbart TV. Larry, good to have you in the house. so great to be here. Yeah, I tell you, I always love to talk about the polls. It's what I do. I know you people are getting tired of me, but I really love crunching the numbers. There's another guy who likes to look at the polls a lot. His name's Tom Bevan from RealClearPolitics.com. Tom, how are you? I'm great, Brian. Great to be with you. Okay, so look, I, I, I'm going to save you having to go through all these numbers because I've already looked at your website this morning. <laughs> uh, the, the latest Rasmussen poll, uh, this is nationwide, Romney plus four. Gallup, Romney plus five. ABC News has it as Romney plus one. If you average all of the recent polls, the big polls, the little polls, all together, the real clear politics average of polls has Romney up by 09 <laughs> That's that's still very close. Uh, and then here's the other thing, though. Everybody seems to think it's coming down to Ohio. The real clear politics average of polls in Ohio is Obama, 1.9. But I just saw Scott Rasmussen on Fox News, and I think he's about to release a poll that says, in Ohio, it's tied. What do you think? Well, I mean, yeah, I think that's right. I mean, Rasmussen actually does, does one-day polls. You know, the national polls... Tend to uh, the state polls tend to lag the national polls, right? So, what you, which is why we pay attention to the national polls. Obviously, we have 50 state elections in, in these battleground states, but when you see, for example, Romney sort of tick up nationally in, in these tracking polls overnight, he went up two points in the ABC Washington Post poll. He's still holding on to, I think, a five point lead in the Gallup. He went up a couple points in the in the Rasmussen. Do you expect to find those sorts of uh, you know trends following along in the states? And so. It would make perfect sense that if, if Romney has moved out to, you know, one point lead nationally, that you'd see a place like Ohio go from a 1.9% lead in our average to, uh, you know, down to one point or, or even tied. And we do have polls right now in Ohio that show, you know, that to be already a, a one, two, three point race. So it, it's not really surprising. I mean, I really do think Ohio right now is where Obama had a four and a half point lead in our average before that first debate. He's down down to a one point nine percent lead. And I, I think you'll see that state moving into basically an absolute dead heat. Do you subscribe to the theory that many do that that you can't win the presidency without winning Ohio? I actually don't, and here's why. <clears throat> if you give Romney, Florida, North Carolina, and Virginia, and Virginia is very tight. Don't get me wrong. Although Romney has led in the last three most recent polls, there Romney's leading, very slim leads, but he's leading. If you give Obama Nevada, where he's got small but steady lead there, two, three points, and you focus on five states. You focus on the Midwest, Obama's sort of Midwestern firewall, Ohio, Wisconsin, and Iowa, and then you look at Colorado in the west, New Hampshire in the east. If Obama wins Ohio, Romney has to win, must win, Wisconsin and Colorado, and then he has to win either Iowa or New Hampshire, and he would get to 270. So there is a path. It would be historic. I mean, we haven't seen a president, we haven't seen a Republican uh, you know, win the White House without winning Ohio. This would be a first. But there is a path. Um, conversely, if if Romney wins Ohio, Obama would have to win all of those states. He would have to sweep all five of the, uh, the, the other four states. So um, <clears throat> that's why I think Ohio is so cool, because it does, it really, you know, it would put the pressure on electorally. But there certainly are scenarios where you can craft. And the thing about Ohio, too, Brian, is that, you know, Obama has sort of defied gravity there a little bit. He's dropped four points in nationally. He's dropped four or five points in a lot of these swing states. He's only dropped about two and a half points in Ohio. And, and that's been a really tough nut for, for Romney to crack. But he's, but Romney has been able to make bigger, better inroads in some of these other states, like Wisconsin, which voted for Obama 13 and a half points four years ago. Tom, Larry O'Connor here. And you know what's interesting when I look at the RCP averages, because it's bookmarked like everybody should have it bookmarked, the RCP poll numbers. Uh, what's amazing to me is that even in the states where Obama is doing well uh, in those swing states that you just mentioned, he just can't crack that 47 number or that 48 number. Uh, even when he's got a lead, what, what, what is the story there? And is that significant for an incumbent this close to Election Day? Absolutely. I mean, you, you know, to have an incumbent president two weeks before Election Day, now under two weeks before Election Day, to be polling, uh, you know, in, in the 47, 48, 49 range is, is an absolute, uh, you know, red flag. I mean, that's why the Obama campaign, I think, is really sweating it out. Um, and you're right. I mean, nationally, just, just to give you a sort of example of how that 
why that first debate was so important. Two days before that first debate, on October 1st, Barack Obama, was at, he had a four-point lead nationally in the real clear politics average. But more importantly, to your point, Larry, his vote share, right, was at its highest point ever in the general election race. He'd reached 49.3%. So he was pushing that 50% mark nationally. He was pushing 50% or over 50% in, in some of these critical swing states. After that first debate, Obama dropped two points. Romney rose two, two and a half points. And, and that's why you see Romney with a, a lead nationally <clears throat> now. But in these swing states, Obama dropped as well. And even though he holds a lead in a lot of these swing states, your point he's not over 50 percent in any of them in the real clear politics averages i'll put this on me because i don't want to put you in the middle of this but i mean i think it's interesting 47 percent support for president obama here's another interesting statistic 47 percent of americans don't pay federal income taxes is that a coincidence i don't think so all right tom so let's get down to the commonwealth of virginia we're going back out to the swingiest of the swing states on friday for a live broadcast set the stage in in in, in virginia what needs to happen there well, I mean, that's going to be fought out really in the northern suburbs, obviously. If Romney can <clears throat> make inroads and, and keep his, if he can keep Obama's vote share down, keep it close in Fairfax, Loudoun County areas, um, I would think that he would win Virginia. Again, we don't have a ton of recent polling there, but the most recent polls show Romney with a slight lead. Um, Obama is investing heavily, so, I mean, Virginia is an absolutely uh, critical battleground. I mean, we talked about the electoral math earlier. It simply doesn't, none of that matters, none of that, if, if Romney doesn't win Virginia. I mean, if Obama wins Virginia, then, then you know, Romney really has to sort of run the table. So, uh, very close there, but I think Romney has, Obama hasn't stopped his momentum there. He may have slowed it a little bit, but he hasn't stopped it. And, and absent something, you know, changing in the next couple of weeks, I, I would give Romney the edge there. Considering how critical Florida is, and it has been over the last few cycles, it's shocking to me that we're not talking about Florida that much. Is it pretty much a done deal now for Romney? You know, I wouldn't use the term done deal, although, it, look, it's a state that, you know, moved pretty substantially. Obama had a two-and-a-half-point lead there prior to that first debate. Now he's behind by two-and-a-half points. I mean, all the most recent evidence there indicates that Romney's got a small but stable lead. Uh, it's, it's, it's by no means, you know, over with. And the Obama campaign had a campaign. They had a, a, a conference call yesterday with reporters saying, absolutely, we're not, you know, we're not, we're doubling down on all these things. We're not pulling out of North Carolina. We're fighting for, for uh, Florida. But the reality is that, as, you know, as we sit here two weeks away, Florida is a very expensive media market. Yep. And, and I think it has sort of slipped a little bit. And, and uh, you know, we'll still see the campaigns going there. We'll still see them spending money, but, but maybe not as much. They're going to, I think, refocus their resources elsewhere. I just have a second left because I'm running over here. But uh, do you see this still as a possible scenario one candidate wins the popular vote, one candidate wins the Electoral College vote. I knew you were going to ask that, Brian. I, actually, it, look, if the polling data is accurate and if the election were held today, that's exactly what we'd have. We'd have Romney win the popular uh, vote and Obama win the Electoral <laughs> College. But two weeks left, still a lot of uh, things can happen, and these, sen these things sort of tend to sort themselves out in the end. In so, the last few so days, I still yeah. think it's unlikely but but certainly possible all right tom thank you so much good to have you on from realclearpolitics.com tom b